Hello and welcome to NTA Nationwide. I'm Ayo Deji Makinde. You can follow this news broadcast live on our website nta.ng forward slash live and also on our social media platforms displayed on the screen for updates. Let's begin by telling you that President Muhammad Buhari has outlined his desire for the emergence of the Commonwealth of Nations to become a real global power block. The president said this in an address ahead of the forthcoming Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, Chugam, to be hosted by Rwanda in June, noting that the largest contingent of Commonwealth countries is African. President Buhari wants the body to leverage on the opportunities provided by its 54 member strength to reduce trade barriers, providing a common front at forums like the United Nations and uniting to defeat terrorism. President Buhari applauded steps taken by the UK to simplify taxes deductible on imported goods, saying the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement is also a reciprocal move to ensure free trade. He called on Commonwealth countries to draw closer in their common interests. The Nigerian Senate has suspended all items scheduled for consideration at Tuesday's plenary in honor of late Nse Ekpenyo, who represented Oran Federal Constituency of Akwaibom State. National Assembly Correspondent Ignatius Unquo reports. Oh, the motion say aye. Aye. Those again say nay. The ayes have it. Two weeks after the National Assembly adjourned for Easter break, senators are back to the chamber. Against expectations that plenary will be moved to committee room when they reconvene because of planned commencement of renovation in the chamber. The renovation is yet to commence and therefore plenary continued in the hallowed chamber. 13 items were listed on the other paper for consideration, but unfortunately, all were stepped down in honor of a serving member of the House of Representatives, Nse Ebenyong from Akwaibom State, who died Monday of this week. Distinguished colleagues, we have been informed of the death of Honorable Ebenyong Nse Basi of Oron Federal Constituency of Akwaibom State on Monday, 25th of April, 2022. In line with our tradition, the Senate is therefore suspend plenary and all legislative activities in his honor. I so move. Well, as it's uh, customary uh, with our conventional traditions, we will adjourn the Senate in difference and in memory of. Uh, uh, in the demise of our colleague in the House of Rep. It is a tradition that whenever a serving member of the National Assembly dies, both chambers suspend legislative activities of the next plenary. From the National Assembly, Ignatius, Inquo, MTA News. Nigeria has thrown its weight behind efforts by the African Development Bank towards averting food crises in Africa in response to the Russia-Ukraine war. President Mohamed Buhari, who stated this while granting audience to the president of the bank, Akinwumi Adeshino, described the proactive steps as a worthwhile enterprise. State House correspondent Adamu Sambu has the report. Welcome home. How are you? Thank you, sir. <laughs> Since the outbreak of the Russia-Ukraine war, the African Development Bank has been working hard to insulate Africa from its negative consequences 
especially on food security. The president of the bank, Dr. Akimumi Adeshina, is here to brief President Muhammad Buhari on steps taken so far towards averting food crisis on the continent now and in the foreseeable future. The Nigerian leader thanked the African Development Bank for his timely intervention, which he described as not only appropriate but a fitting response to the crisis. This, he said, clearly shows that the African Development Bank knows the weaknesses and strength of Africa and at all times planning and working ahead. The president said his administration in particular has done a lot towards achieving food security and will therefore support any effort aimed at ensuring sustainability. Dr. Akimumi Adeshina said the Russia-Ukraine war would surely create global problems, particularly for Africa, which imports a huge percentage of its food from the two countries. Already, he explained, the price of wheat has gone up by about 60%, and indications are that there would be fertilizer deficit of nearly 2 million metric tons, which will affect food production by about 20%. Dr. Adeshina also estimated that Africa will lose about $11 billion worth of food, and coming shortly after COVID-19, that will be rather serious. And to prepare against the evil day, the African Development Bank has developed a $1.5 billion Africa Emergency Food Plan, which is now before the bank's board for approval to avert food crisis on the continent and mitigate the impact of the Russia-Ukraine war. For Nigeria in particular, Dr. Adeshina said at least 5 million smallholder farmers would be helped to produce 9.5 million metric tons of food. From the State House, Adamusambo, NTA News. To a bit of electoral matters, INEC says the suspension of the continuous voters' registration exercise in some parts of Imo State is still in effect and advised the public to disregard any information on the contrary. Statements by INEC National Commissioner for Information, Festus Okoye, notes that while the Commission is not unmindful of the imperative of giving every eligible Nigerian the opportunity to register and vote in the future elections, the safety and security of citizens involved in the exercise is a paramount concern. INEC appeals to the public to discountenance the purported resumption of the CVR in the three local government areas of Osu, Njaba and Iutuboma. Such statements are capable of misleading the public and further jeopardizing the safety of registrants, officials and the Commission's facilities. At the appropriate time, the Commission will announce any new decision on the matter after due consultations. In another development, INEC in Ikiti State says it has taken delivery of the non-sensitive materials for the conduct of the June 18 governorship election in the state. The resident electoral commissioner in the state, Adeniro Tela, who confirmed this at the Voter Education Implementation Workshop in Adoikiti, reiterates the determination of the electoral body to conduct credible election in the state. Kola Adebobui reports. Having understood that people rely on INEC, being the umpire, to educate them on the best way to exercise their franchise, the Voter Education Implementation Workshop is apt to remind the electoral officers in the state of their responsibilities towards achieving free and acceptable governorship election come June 18. From our whole end, we have gotten the necessary thing that takes for us to conduct the election. In terms of the non-sensitive material, we have about 85% complementary materials who are on ground, with the exception of the sensitive materials. And this is normally being dispersed to us in maybe two, three days before the election is even being conducted. We ensure that we observe the election to ensure that the education we have given out is well adhered to or well understood by getting credible feedback. Stakeholders advocate proper planning by the electoral body towards the enhancing credibility of the elections in Adwekiti. Kola Adibabwi, Antinus. Now let's go over to our Lagos Network Center where Adiola will be our guide. Good evening, Adiola.
Good evening, Ayo. And still on INEC, the Independent National Electoral Commission has commenced a five-day modular training for disability desk officers across the country to ensure all segments of a society participate fully in the forthcoming general elections. Amaka Owu has the details. Global statistics indicates that persons with disability make up 10 to 15 percent of any given population. In Nigeria, the figure is about 20 million. This data is necessitating the need for INEC to build the capacity of disability desk officers of the commission across the country. My expectation at this particular bridge workshop is to get myself equipped with relevant knowledge and skills. And as well, uh, transmit the knowledge of uh, election into the PWDs uh, in our various states. For the Abinos, we share them uh, magnifying glasses. The training is aimed at ensuring inclusivity for this group for active participation in the electoral process. INEC has put some measures in place to make the electoral process more friendly to the PWDs. Some of these measures include creation of regular interactive platforms, provision of braille ballots, sign language interpreters. Sections 54, subsection 2 of the Electoral Act 2022 empowers the Commission to support persons living with disability. The bridge modular training is part of the Commission's strategic plan of action designed to sharpen and enrich the working knowledge of our new desk officers. The training is in partnership with the European Centre for Electoral Support. This workshop will further consolidate all efforts geared at ensuring the full inclusion of PWDs, eliminating barriers which prohibit their full participation as voters, and candidates. After the training, it is expected that desk officers will become foot soldiers to implement policies for persons living with disability, especially as elections are fast approaching. In Lagos, Amaka O, NTA News. Now to bilateral relations. Stakeholders have called for the ease of visa restrictions between Nigeria and South Africa to improve their bilateral relations. They made the call during the ambassadorial forum tagged South Africa-Nigeria relations organized by the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs in Lagos. Hengino Jen Adams has the details. South Africa and Nigeria share a common vision on issues of political and economic integration in Africa. They also share a common perception on the need for a sustainable conflict resolution mechanism in Africa that is primarily driven by Africans. The visit by the South Africa ambassador to Nigeria to the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs was to further strengthen the existing bilateral relations and also address grey areas that is of great concern to both countries. The issue of um, visas will arise um, in almost every discussion. And we know that and, uh, and we are doing everything in our power to resolve that problem. Stakeholders urged both countries to maintain political, economic and trade relationships at all levels. The whole idea is to, is to expose these shortcomings, these problematic areas. And what the ambassador did was to tell us that these problems are being addressed. And we are hoping that they will be addressed because the future should be a really great cooperation between the two giants of Africa. This is the right time, you know, where we need to now enhance, you know, harness our relationship for mutual benefit. I think this is what a lot of African countries should do. The ambassadorial forum is one of many series by the Institute to brainstorm on various issues affecting Nigeria in particular and the continent in general. In Lagos, Hinginu John Adams, NTA News. Do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng or live and on our other social media handles displayed on your screen for updates. It's now time for us to take a break. The news will be back shortly with Ayodeji in Abuja when we return. Don't go away.
Put to 7 kilometer Lagos Ibadan Railway is the first double track standard gauge railway to be built in West Africa. The Mobalaji Johnson train station is a masterpiece, an infrastructure that is gradually becoming an iconic building in Lagos State. The modern facilities put the station on a world map of train stations. Likewise, all the new train stations across the country built to world-class standards. The train and its convenience is indeed an admirable effort with commendations from Nigerians. This is a station that we have to commend the federal government for putting a beautiful face, empowering us in Lagos State, not only in economic and uh, political arena, I can say that I'm really impressed with the infrastructures in place. Kudos to the Minister of Transportation, kudos to the federal government. Truly, good things are coming out of Nigeria, and the federal government is deserving of all the applause. <laughs> University education and incessant strikes impact on growth and development is a focus on NT Tuesday Live this week. Tuesday Live, incisive and educative at 10.30 p.m. Join us. From dusk to dawn, 24 hours a day, NTA International is with you in your living room, office, everywhere and anywhere. We provide the company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs and the best of entertainment. Tune in to the STV Channel 251, Go TV Channel 91, Freeview UK Channel 264 or you can download www.visiontv.co.uk app for iOS or Android. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. NTA International, Africa's window to the world. The Nigerian government's ongoing drive to extensively unlock the full potential of the country's non-oil export economy is gradually yielding results. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo says the commitment will be reinforced by all stakeholders towards achieving the best possible outcome. The Vice President gave this assurance while declaring open the 2022 National Conference on Non-Oil Exports with the theme Exports for Survival. State House Correspondent GD Onifadi reports. A walk through the exhibition stand reveals efforts of most micro, small, and medium enterprises in the country working to scale up the quality and packaging of their products to meet international standards. And the Vice President says government understands and fully appreciate the extensive impact that this will have on the people of the country. Some of our best stories, of course, are in the tech sector. In the last seven years, six tech companies have become unicorns, companies valued at over $1 billion each. And all of this, and all of this between two recessions. So it's evident that there is a lot that's going on. And one of the reasons why you'll find that the tech sector is going so well is because I believe of the very light hand or the regulatory sector upon it. And this is one of the things that we must seek to achieve. We must seek to achieve a situation where regulators see themselves as facilitators of business, as opposed to policemen or those who may just provide some obstacles. And this has been the focus. 
The exhibition ground is full of locally made products, and I asked Secretary of the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, the Minister of State for Industry, Trade and Investment, yes, Madam Katagun, and the Executive Director of the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, Ezra Yakusak, of their impression on what are on display. SMEs are the ones that take people out of unemployment. Uh, we've depended so much on government in the past years and decades as a source of employment. These are the ones that are providing the jobs, and whoever wants to survive as a government must sustain. Well, and it's exciting that um, you see so many of our MSMEs, uh, they, they, the products are improving, the packaging, the quality, and more important for me also, the, the labeling. Because we've been canvassing that they should try and label in English and French or English and another language so that their goods will have international acceptability. Each company that is here, they will tell you there's an intervention by NEPC. They will tell you their success story is tied to NPC. So we are winning. It may be gradual, but it's surely we are reaching there. We have the potential. We have the opportunity. Let's just tap into it. And I'm sure as we are doing, we have generally dived into it and we're doing and hopefully, hopefully, this is the end thing now and not oil anymore. The technical session of the conference will look into emerging issues, disrupting Nigerians' non-oil export and innovative solutions, strengthening institutional capacity for effective trade facilitation, and financing Nigerian non-oil export value chains, as well as sustainable market access for Nigerian non-oil export, among others. In Abuja, Jide Onifade, NT News. Moving on to some health matters, Nigeria, like other African countries, is to intensify efforts to achieve the universal basic health coverage of the Sustainable Development Goals before 2030. To this end, the National Health Insurance Scheme is targeting rural areas to get them integrated into health schemes. Elizabeth Omari reports. SDG3, which aspires to ensure good health and well-being, aims to provide access to safe and effective medicines and vaccines for all. To meet this target before 2030, players in the health sector are adopting sustainable partnerships to benefit low-income earners and rural dwellers. Health insurance is being advanced to achieve this. The scheme has developed a 10-year strategic plan, 2020 to 2030, which serves as a roadmap for achieving its mandates. The implementation of plans has commenced in earnest. With this all important document, efforts toward attainment of universal health coverage in Nigeria is now well focused. To effectively coordinate the entire health insurance ecosystem, Professor Samba noted that communities should leverage on platforms provided to achieve the universal basic health coverage. The NHIS Broach Sharing Initiative has been fully admitted and unveiled in six tertiary hospitals around the country. With this initiative, cancer growth will now be highly subsidized. Efficient funding for health systems to save lives of millions of people is the ultimate goal. In Abuja, Elizabeth. Omori, NT News. Meanwhile, management of sickle cell disorder is usually aimed at avoiding pain episodes and relieving symptoms to avoid complications. Medical experts and survivors of the disorder say rather than having the Tuscan experience of managing sickle cell, it is better to enlighten people to go for screening of their genotype before marriage. Maureen Leo Ajom interacted with people living with sickle cell and a medical practitioner who manages the disorder and filed in this report. Medical experts say sickle cell anemia can lead to many complications such as stroke, acute chest syndrome, pulmonary hypertension, organ damage. This has to do with number one mindset by taking your waters regularly by taking your folic acid and bico then having rest as that when due so we call upon the government to help us to face awareness give policies that should maybe prevent um or policies that can help make sure that people have you know, the genotype even from birth or 
at different points of their lives. Despite the fact that they know that their genotype is AS, they go ahead to get married to AS. I want to say that this habit should be discouraged. I'm glad that a lot of churches, a lot of um, organizations even try to cancel um, p uh, partners, you know, before they get mar married, to know going for screening and the rest of it. And for me, that helps a lot. Managers of sickle cell anemia patients say the prevalence of sickle cell anemia in Nigeria could reduce and the narrative reverse if social challenges such as stigmatization are checked with intensified awareness campaigns, review of aborted legislation, while soliciting the inclusion of patients in the National Health Insurance Scheme Policy of the Federal Government to enable the patient access medical care at free or reduced cost. In Calabar, Maureen Liu Ajom, NTN News. Elsewhere, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, has arrested Arthur Mallison Emmanuel Okatu, a drug baron behind three billion naira tramadol deal involving the suspended Deputy Commissioner of Police, Abakiari-led Intelligence Response Team, IRT. He was nabbed on board a flight to Abuja at the Motala Muhammad International Airport, Lagos, on Wednesday, 13th April, following his alleged involvement in importing large consignments of tramadol hydrochloride, an illicit drug. He was believed to own pharmaceutical and plastic manufacturing companies, which he uses as a cover to import illicit drugs into the country. In addition to operating 103 bank accounts used to launder money, NDLEA says Ukatu came under watch last year after five cartons of Tramadol 225 mg were seized from his staff and sold to undercover police officers from the then Kiari led IRT of the Nigeria police. The price of a carton of tramadol was negotiated at 17 million naira each as against the then black market value that ranged from 18 million to 20 million naira per carton in Lagos. Dibabari in Portacot has the next sets of reports on Nationwide. Hello Dibabari, it's good to see you. Good day, it's good to see you too. Welcome to Port Accords. The activation of 2022 Electoral Act is stimulating interest among younger Nigerians to register and the ongoing voter continuous voter registration exercise in order to exercise their franchise in the 2023 general elections. Kingsley Amaji reports. A visit to some of the registration centers in Port Harcourt and Obia or local government areas indicates that more people are taking advantage of the period to register, transfer to new polling units, and make corrections where necessary. I'm just here to change my voter card because I'm using Cross River State uh, voter card. The way they told me, they said that I cannot use it to vote here. After they signed the new electoral act, most of us uh, deemed it fit that at least it's no longer business as usual. So we believe that this time, we may get it right. The concern some of them are having here is that the processes here to get this card is quite slow as there are fewer personnel attending to quite a number of those who are here. I actually came here to collect my voter's card. I did registration online. That was about two or three weeks ago. From what I'm seeing, it doesn't seem uh, well organized so far. INEC in River State says it has entered the third quarter of the ongoing continuous voter registration exercise, decentralizing the process to the world level. Those that are there to register, those that have just turned 18 years, I've just told that politicians go to rally people around to come and do multiple registration. Even the law is against multiple registration. The commission is equally calling on those who registered in the first quarter to come forward to pick up their permanent voter cards. In Port Harcourt, Kingsley Amajiri, NTA News. Attitudinal reorientation of individuals in the society in prompt prosecution of offenders of gender based violence are among decisions reached at a town hall meeting with stakeholders of some rural communities in Akwaibom State. A median Umor reports that the sensitization is to check the spread of gender based violence and its possible eradication. 
Incessant rates of sexual molestation and gender-based violence in Nigeria is like stating the obvious, but more worrisome is the fact that the menace is gradually eroding moral values in the society. To further check the trend, therefore, the Kwaibom state government, through this platform, is preferring solutions by engaging stakeholders in rural areas through this nation of information on the dangers of rape and GBV, as well as likely sanctions to be meted on persons who run foul of the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Law. Section 1 of the BAP Law deals with the offense of rape. Very, very important. Records, a magistrate court, evolve any method to preside or settle the offense of rape. What we are doing here to hear the thoughts of a better society. If you see a man, a grown, a grown man, misbehaving by beating uh, the other kid and the female, I think it's a foundational problem that started from the family. These things keep happening every now and then. And we ask ourselves, why are we having things like this in the society? To serve as a deterrent to corporate, the wife of a Kwaibom state governor, Mata Odomimano, says over 28 violators of the VAP law have been prosecuted. I want to give you people assurance. There is no bail for any rapist. The sensitization is slated to take place in the 10 federal constituencies for effective eradication of gender-based violence in a Kwaibom state. From Ikarekwene, Emid Yongomo, NTA News. We are done here. Nationwide, we continue with Susan in Makodi right after the break. Good evening. The ever busy ancient city of Onija is a commercial hub with millions of commuters seamlessly linking other states daily for business, leisure, and other purposes. To upscale its road network, the construction of a 1.6-kilometer-long Second Niger Bridge, including a 10.3-kilometer highway furnished with other infrastructure, has been in motion by the federal government. This project will ease congestion on the existing 56-year-old Onitra Bridge and boost the economic capacity of the state as it easily connects to other parts of the country. The completion of the world-class Second Niger Bridge Onitra will be one of the many proud moments of the state, its people, Nigerians, and foreign investors. Onicha, which hosts the largest market in Africa, is geared up to boast of an impressive road network. Once again, these moments are made alive by the federal government and it is deserving of all the applause. A new edition of TV Guide is out exclusively with Professor Umar Garba Dambata, Executive Chairman of the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC. We have unveiled the 622 is a toll free line through which consumers can be able to lodge their complaints. And we have provided introduced the 112 as the national emergency number. This edition is a compendium of mind blowing stories for your reading pleasure, ranging from technology, entertainment, economy, media, politics family, and lots more. Pick up your copy and get abreast with issues and trending features within our space. TV Guide, very incisive, very educative and compelling. Grab a copy at the vendor near you or any NTA station nationwide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion. Do you run a breast or cervical cancer service? Are you a private or public laboratory, clinic or hospital that offer any of breast imaging, cervical cancer screening, HPV vaccination or other breast or cervical cancer services? Is your service a primary, secondary or tertiary center located in any part of Nigeria, no matter how remotely located it is? If yes to any of these questions, then subscribe to the OCI Foundation's Savvy Breast app and become accessible and visible to millions of Nigerians. It is all for free. To subscribe, just type the Savvy Breast application form on Google or go to the OCI Foundation's page on www.ocifoundation.org and search 
for server breast application form. Complete the form and submit. And let millions of Nigerians patronize you all for free. Become part of the OCI Foundation's quest to tackle breast and cervical cancers in Nigeria. And join us to rise by limited hours. Thank you for joining us in Makudi. The Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development has trained 46 food vendors on the National Homegrown School Feeding Program in Borno State. The training is to enhance the quality of food served pupils in public primary schools and how to maintain safe and hygienic environment to prevent food contamination. Godwin in Nalibu reports that the minister was represented by the special assistant to the national coordinator, NSIP, Lawal Gambo. Two vendors each are selected from the 23 local government areas of the state. They are to include 10, 20 other cooks each in their respective local government areas. I've learned that early, uh, every morning you have to take your bath before starting the cooking. And after the cooking, you have to look good before taking the food to go and serve the children. I know how to cook, but it has the rules and regulations to show them how to follow so that it will give the, head, head, give, it will give the children a healthy. Uh, the objective is to ensure that all the food vendors on the National Home Grown School Feeding Program are well grounded in cooking quality meals under hygienic conditions for school pupils. Representative of the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, the Special Assistant to the National Coordinator of National Social Investment Program, Laura Gambo, assured the participants that the government will continue to do its best in spite of paucity of funds. Everything depends on budgeting, but we are hoping soon with the collaboration with the state government and the cooks will come out with an acceptable means of uh, preserving this food for the peoples. It is a wonderful step taken now but to make sure that uh, cooks are being, you know, or kept abreast of the present trend of doing things, washing of hands regularly to ensure hygienic environment of both self and you know the environment and all of that. The list it has 6,512 food vendors on the National Home Grown School Feeding Program in Makudi, Goldwyn, Inalegu, NTA News. National Electoral Commission, Benue State, says it is determined to ensure all the eligible voters in the state get their permanent voters card before the 2023 general elections. Correspondent Moses Ajau would have visited the INEC office in Makudi, where two registration centers are situated, and brings us an update on the ongoing registration. The 2022 continual voters registration exercise is said to be the final exercise before the commencement of the 2023 general election. The exercise is aimed at providing eligible voters of 18 years and above with the opportunity to register and participate in the general elections and others who might have misplaced their voters' cards. To ensure early collection of voters' cards, some residents of Makudi have converged on independent National Electoral Commission's office in Makudi for enrollment. No, no issues for now. Everything is running smoothly. Well organized. The line is orderly. We just call the next person and I think it's me. It took me less than five minutes to enroll as a person, and I have been here less than 30 minutes ago. According to the head, Voters Education and Publicity, Independent National Electoral Commission, Emmanuel Ope says, the commission is equipped to ensure smooth and early distribution of voters' card before the next election. The inside has been very smooth. Our machines have been deployed to the field are uh, responding very well. Pieces of the machine are working and things like that. Even when the job is operating, they have to feel that there is no network and all the things. The machine are using us and in new devices that we can install even offline. So there is no network. 
machine that we are our main the field and we will be applying which we further disclose that the turnout of eligible air release for both gas card is an indication of the people's determination to express their right come 2023 in Makudi Moses Ajay Odin. Thank you, Ms. And that's our package from Makudi. We now return to Ayodeji in Abuja for more on NTA Nationwide. Susan in our Makudi Network Center. From Yobe State comes a report that the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Farouk, has said the desire to improve school enrollment and nutritional intake among pupils in the country could be realized when cooks hired under the National Homegrown School Feeding Program are better trained to meet contemporary challenges in personal and environmental hygiene. The minister stated this in Damaturu at the opening of a one-day capacity building workshop organized for master cooks under the National Social Investment Program. Yenusa Suleiman reports. The bid to make the program more vibrant and meet all standards the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development initiated training for master cooks across the country to enhance their skills to effectively handle the National Homegrown School Feeding Program. <laughs> During the training of the 34 master cooks carefully selected from the 70 local government areas of Yobe State, the Humanitarian Affairs Minister, Sadia Omar Farouk, represented says the training covers areas such as safety measures, personal and environmental hygiene, kitchen control, food cost, menu standardization, as well as record keeping among others, where the participants are expected to step down knowledge gain to other cooks in their localities. We are here to carry out a nationwide documentation. The state governor, Memala Buni, represented, assured the minister that the government in the state will continue to collaborate with all tiers of government to ensure the success of the program. I wish to reiterate your state's government commitment under the tribal leadership of His Excellency Governor May Malabuni in governance where special priorities has been pronounced and instituted set of emergency in education sector. Each to train at least 20 cooks in their respective council areas. In the matter, Yunusa Suleiman, NTA News. Securing actionable intelligence is critical to enhancing the fight against vandalism and oil bunkering in Nigeria. Speaking on the illegal refinery explosion at Ohaji Egbema in Imo State, Nigeria, on Good Morning Nigeria, the head of operations of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, Haruna Lawal, said the incident was not a failure of security agencies but lack of cooperation from members of uh, communities housing these illegal refineries. Ekemini Williams has the details. The number of casualties from the Imo illegal refinery fire in Abayezi forest is still up in the air, but NEMA has put it at about 110. Some of the community people whom lost one of their, their own have come to take some of the corpses for burial. Getting to the site is a very pathetic situation and a very gory site because uh, all the affected persons are burnt beyond recognition. It has intensified concern over the recurring problem of oil theft and its consequences. National Treasurer of the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, Ojedokun Latif Babaji, traced the incidents to failure of regulation of oil marketers. There are a lot of uh, petrol stations all around that are not registered. What is DPR and other regulatory agency doing on that? Where does these people source their whole product? It is not a security failure per se. Rather, we are doing our best. The people that this thing happens within their companies, they should be able to own up and let us know that these people that are coming in, they are not from my environment. And then the, some of their children are part of it. They should be able to just point them out so that we will know how to tackle those issues. They noted that the locations of the illegal refineries are largely inaccessible, but said regulatory agencies need to intensify activities. In Abuja, Ikemini Williams, NTA News. Countries along Sudan, Savannah and the Sahel region will this year experience flooding 
an early cessation of rainfall that will be accompanied by dry spell. This is part of the findings of weather forecasters from 17 countries who converged on Abuja to analyze the weather condition of the region. Musa Aliu reports that Africa is assessing a UN Climate Support Fund, which also tabled, which was also tabled at the meeting. Of climate change. The hour was a commitment by the United Nations and other developed countries to set aside $100 billion annually to assist developing countries mitigate climate change. What we absolutely have to do during this decision was made in 2019 at COP15 in Copenhagen, Denmark, where it was decided that developing countries that are contributing less to the global warming should be supported. Investigation reveals that since the pronouncement, non-African countries was able to assess the fund. Uh, the negotiators are getting their eyes more shined, and uh, as it is, a lot of efforts are being put to access these funds to address issues of climate change. The dwindling rainfall. Flooding and drought in the Sudan Savannah Belt and the Sahel region are attributed to the climate change. Data generated by these forecasters from 17 countries indicate that rainy season in the region this year will be early, but with short duration. We are expecting to have short dry spell, both at the beginning of the rainy season, but also by the end of the rainy season. With all the efforts that we have made, if these results do not get down to the last mile communities, those who need it the most, I'm afraid we are, being, we are, we are wasting resources. The forum is created to be providing and analyzing weather-related data with a view to assisting communities mitigate climate change. The added information from this forum will likewise assist NEMA in ensuring all states and communities vulnerable to flood receive the warning through community engagement. In Abuja, Musa Aliyu, NTA News. The Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has decided to extend its ongoing strike by eight weeks. The decision was reached at its recent National Executive Council meeting. ASU, in a statement from its president, Emmanuel Oshodeke, says the extension is predicated on the fact that recent meetings with the federal government's negotiating team is yet to yield results. ASU 